On this episode of Hands On Cars, Kevin takes you to the SEMA show in Las Vegas to see Riddler winner J.F. Lanier's incredible 64 Riviera, Rick Doerr's Black Pearl, and John Wargo's 62 Vet. Hey guys, Kevin Tate's here for Hands On Cars. Well, Project Z Sled is really coming along. It's, it's a roller, the, the suspension is underneath it, the rear axle is built, the subframe connectors are in, the bottom is finished. Uh, all the rust is gone, if you can believe that, the rust is gone from this car. So it's turned so many corners, metaphorically speaking, that, um, that it's really amazing the transformation that's happened with this vehicle. Even though, looking at it from the outside, you may not see it, but the truth is about this car is that this is not some half-baked TV project that we can flip a switch and have a hundred guys come in and finish the work just so we can show you some progress. This is actually my car and this is at the stage that it just needs some time investment. Body work takes time. I'm the paint education guy, I know. I'm the guy that uh, works with Eastwood to show you guys how to do stuff. So we can't just gloss over this stuff. We wanna show you the good tech. We wanna show you the procedures and show you how to spend your money and your time wisely. So unfortunately, we are just gonna have to invest a whole lot of T-I-M-E on this C-A-R. For the next two episodes, we're going to be doing exactly what we said we were going to do when we launched Hands On Cars, and that is take you guys to places that you may not normally ever get to go, like the SEMA show. We're going to take you to SEMA 2014 and show you things like the first time SEMA ever has invited the public into this closed automotive industry trade show, SEMA Ignited. We have conversations with J.F. Lanier, Rick Dorr, uh, the Lords of the Car Hordes hosts, Riddler Award winners, uh, all kinds of really, really really seriously talented people and it buys me some time to actually do the hands-on work to do this job right. So buckle up because the next couple episodes are great shows. Stick around, you gotta watch them. In the meantime, I gotta get some body work done on Zed Sled, so we have something to show you. In case you guys haven't noticed, we're actually on a setup day at SEMA show. We're giving you an inside scoop that nobody gets to see. It's kind of chaos right now, but in a few hours, this is going to be amazing. And corny segue, speaking of amazing, John, oh my goodness, look at this car. I, I'm looking at detail that I can't imagine how much time it took. Please tell me about this beautiful car. Well, this is a 1962 Corvette Roadster uh, that we built for a customer. Uh, we went out to Detroit and tried to compete for the Riddler with this car. Uh, we did pretty well, but uh, of course we didn't win. Uh, but you know, you gotta try. Okay, well we started with an SR3 chassis that we beefed up because we knew we were gonna do a thousand horsepower or so. Uh, so we did that and we got a 598 inch big block with a Vortex supercharger and we actually dined at 1,086 horsepower. Oh, wow. So from there, um, the customer actually had a 62 Corvette that was on the second level of a barn in pieces. So you can imagine the wreck that we got. Yeah. Um, but you know, we knew that it could be rebuilt. You know, that's the nice thing about what we do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, fiberglass is a little bit different animal. Explain how this would be different in the reconstruction of this vehicle as opposed to a steel car. Well, if you're doing with fiberglass, you always have the dry times, saturation, things like that. And with the many body modifications as we did, uh, you've always got to give that time to dry out so that way you don't trap solvents and things like that. So one of the things that we did is once all the fiberglass 
modifications were done, we went back and re-gel coated everything. And then we let that sit for, you know, a few months just to make sure that everything was yep. good and dry yep. before we actually started to do the priming and the blocking for all the major body work. Now, for me, fiberglass gives me a sense of freedom to where uh, I can do stuff that I can't do with steel. And obviously, you've gone nuts with this thing. Walk around some of the fiberglass mods. Well, you know, starting in the front, um, the bumpers are all tucked and pinched. Uh, so they are literally kind of molded up into the body. Uh, the headlight rings and the trim has all been fiberglassed in. Um, the sides, we the doubled codes. up the gills uh -huh. uh, just to give it a little bit more of aggressive look. Um, we added a set of C6 Corvette door handles yeah. and even added a brake duct I was about down to say, into the body. And it's functional. There's a screen on the back. It's a functional cooling duct and yep. beautiful 20 inch wheels. Uh, the uh, windshield is an original windshield that has been chopped down three inches. Uh, we dropped that down because we wanted that chop top look. Yeah, yeah. Then we have no roof anymore, so it is a full time roadster now. The A pillars actually have a little camera into them, so there's no side mirrors. No side mirrors. Um, you know, another thing that kind of cleans up the side of the car. Yeah. Um, the the trunk lid and the hood both motorized uh, on linear actuators. Another little trick thing that you don't have to have, but it's cool factor. <laughs> Uh, the rear bumpers are tucked. The cool thing that we did on the bumpers are, these are the original steel bumpers that everybody chromes. Yeah. Everybody's used to seeing them chrome. Well, I, I talked to the customer about doing a uh, satin finish look, so we painted these hyper silver with a satin clear coat, and it yeah. gives it more of that kind of modern feel. Yeah. Well, it also, to me, um, you're expecting to see them chrome. They're not chrome. It's a muted look. It's a very tasteful look, but it makes the polished billet accents that you've got really pop. Your steering wheel, your, your grab handle on the other side, everything is shiny. Your, your hoops on your wheels, it just really accentuates that. Well, one of the things that I liked about that is it also ties in, you know, the hyper silver cray wheels. Yeah. Uh, when you're looking at the overall view of the car, and that's one of the things that we've talked about is the overall look yeah. of the car. The way you tie in colors and tastes and and you know even you know the satin clears you're seeing a lot of guys use now yeah. in the stripes and you know of course everybody expects to see you know a shiny clear coat on the car which you know we use pro spray we're here in the pro spray booth yep. um they're you know company that we've been using for a long time we really like them but the you know the satin clear coat is a nice little you know taste off of just seeing everything shiny like a lot of people are yeah. used to. Well, when you use it tastefully, it, it becomes an accent in itself, and it's very well used on this car, for sure. Thank you. Um, one of the other things that we've done on this is, you know, a full custom interior. Uh, we took a set of regular racing seats and chopped them down. You know, the, the Corvette isn't a very big interior. No. And a regular set of racing seats, you know, they'd be sticking up, you know, 14 inches out of the top of the car. Yeah. So we chopped those down. On the interior, in the door panels, uh, we actually did the same grill insert as what's on the front of the car and then backlit it with LEDs so you get kind of that balance between the outside and the inside again. How long ago was this build done? Uh, this build has been done for about six months okay. uh, and it took about two and a half years to do this car. Right. Here's one thing I wanted to ask you about. You told me it's a blow through carburetor. Tell me about the air cleaner. What is it? Well, essentially this is just an aesthetic piece. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about the blow-through hat is it's a very small, uh, you know, kind of uh, miniature looking, you know, so to say, compared to what a normal air cleaner would look like. Yeah. And it just, it made the motor look smaller than it really was. So, mm -hmm. and this, we also have the Holley EFI system on this car as well. Right. This was actually one of the first uh, of the large horsepower Terminator Holley systems available. Well, one other thing I want to touch on is that you've got, uh, is it 20s on the front, 19s? On the yes. Front? Uh, 20s on the back, 19s on the front. You seem to have a, 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 an inner sense of that balance. Um, uh, do you listen to the customer? Is it your aesthetic taste? You definitely have to work with the customer because their vision sometimes is unrealistic. Um, and when you get the car done, the last thing you want to do is, oh man, that doesn't look right or this yeah. is too big. But a lot of yeah. times, you know, when they come into the shop, and you show them all the pictures of the things that we've done. We've been in business 26 years, so yeah. I have a lot of things that I can show them. Yeah. And I think when they look at those things, they realize that sometimes they need to listen to somebody that's doing this, uh, other than just you know somebody else that maybe tells them, hey, I need a 22 on there. Yeah. They don't all need to be 22. Right, right, right. Let's jump ship again. Pro Spray is obviously a, a good partner to you. I'm seeing some, some real vibrance in this paint. Walk me through this, the color selection and sure. then talk to me about the realistic fire. That looks fantastic. 
This is actually a five color color fade from top to bottom. It's called Mango Tango Copper, and then it fades down five different colors to a darker burnt yeah. orange on the bottom. Yeah. And um, then on top of that, I put a tri-coat ice pearl mm -hmm. over top of that. Then I airbrush the cove, if you see the little yep. uh, beveled edge uh, silver on the outside of that, and then did the true fire flames inside the cove. We went back and forth on whether we should do the real fire or not, so I decided to go ahead and do the panel and show the customer. Yeah. And he was back and forth, and then he saw it, and he's like, got to have it. Well, this car is outstanding, very nice stuff. But not everybody can get to SEMA show. How can somebody find the custom shop if, if they're not in Vegas or not in your hometown? Sure. Well, we're located in Flanagan, Illinois. Uh, we have a website. It's thecustomshop.co. Uh, they can call us at 815-796-2772. Be cool. happy to talk to them. Cool, and you got a lot of pictures of the work that you've done, projects in, in the works. We have about 8,000 pictures on our website. It's a great website, if nothing else. If you want to look at some cool cars, go to the Custom Shop website. John, thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Have a great SEMA show, buddy. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be SEMA 2014 if we didn't get the chance to talk to J.F. Lanier about his beautiful Riddler Award-winning 64 Riviera. Man, this is, a, this is a beautiful car. Congratulations on the Don Riddler Thanks. Award. Thanks, appreciate it. I don't, and and the, the thing that I'm hearing on social media, in magazines, uh, YouTube, autocross videos, you are using this car and you're beating the crap out of it. So, wow, thank you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, you're welcome, but it's me that's having all the fun. Think about it. <laughs> So here's a story from last week. Last week, let's call it three weeks ago, I'm having beers with one of my buddies, and we're talking about how to promote the local racetrack. Yeah. And I say, you know what? If, if the racetrack's willing to understand that we can actually put on a show, yeah. I'll drag race the Rivy just yeah. to do some fundraising. Yeah. Sure enough, two weeks later, push came to shove, and here I am drag racing the thing. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I mean, there's. It's not just dr driving it that's an issue. Yeah. So you can drive it to the grocery store. I picked up my daughter from school. We went out for ice cream in it. <laughs> Whatever. We did some cool stuff with the car. Yeah. But then now we're actually going to a level where you and I are both competitive. So if we're going to show up at the drag strip, we don't want to embarrass ourselves and have a 14-second car. Exactly. Right? We proved that it had 800 horsepower to the tires on the dyno. Yeah. Now we're going to go to the racetrack. And as soon as my helmet went on, all of a sudden I turned it into a race car and I was beating on it. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I get out of it, and I'd, sh I'd be shaking. Not because the car scares me, but more because I was scared of hurting the car. Right. right? Yeah. Now you're taking the RPMs to full load. You're doing 7,000 RPM shifts. You're, you're truly shaking it down. Yeah. The car's swinging sideways. Yeah. And it, in the first three passes, we were trying to figure out what the car would do. Yeah. But at 80 miles an hour, the rear tires still come out. And that's where I was just like, man, yeah. I don't know if I can take this. I don't know if I can put in a full day of drag racing in this car. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We could shave a thousand pounds off the car and have a yeah. race car, but let's be real about this. The car yeah. is, you know, it won the most significant hot rod show of the whole industry. Yeah. It's a show car. Yeah. Does it devaluate this car no. that I got a whole bunch of road rash on the lower quarter panels and that they probably need to be repainted already? Right. Does it devaluate? I don't know, because now we've actually proven something and we've proven the car it made history. Yeah. First Riddler car to ever be drag raced. Yeah. First Riddler car to end up on a set of rollers. Yeah. First Riddler car to have 300 miles on it. Yeah. All those things are given the car pedigree. That's how committed I was to right. prove that you can win that award. Yeah. You can change the industry, and and it, and, and drive the car. Yeah. These cars of this caliber that have won this award. They sit in a room. You back it up. You're not just a builder that sends a car out and stays at home or says, boy, I'm tired, I'm going to Hawaii. You follow through with the stuff. You're the builder. You're the guy that's breaking into it. Yeah. And you're the real deal, man. So thank you. I appreciate you. Thank that. You for and, that. I, and I think I do bring a lot to the table. And I think we were talking this week, like, what's, what's my, my biggest attribute? What can I offer the hot yeah. rod world? Man, I think I'm just a problem solver. Well, you know, that's we all, all hot rodding really, is. Right? That's what hot rodding so it's is. It's just like if you're going to quit because you got a problem, yep. just get out of the industry. Yep. There's too many moving parts. There's too many components. There's yep. too, many, too much interchanging components for it to be easy. And if you that's stress right. out over a car that's unfinished, you're in the wrong game. I wrote a really cool article for one of the magazines just recently because the question was, would it feel like to win? Yep. 
and everybody just expects me to talk about it like I had won the lottery. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's a life-changing, altering moment. Yeah. Well, no, because you have six years of your life, and arguably for me, I've been yeah. chasing this award for 12 years. Yeah. So it's it's not a moment that I hadn't thought about. It's not like, ooh, I wonder what it's going to be like to win. Yeah. I had thought about what it would feel like to win. What I didn't know is the journey and how difficult it would be the last year yeah. of me building a winning car. I understood the complexity of, of competing. I yeah. understood the complexity of building a grade eight car. This car took so much more out of me. Yeah. I had hives from my ears to my ankles. Yeah. We did a, started doing a cool little thing. I got home from SEMA two years ago. And I said to the guys, you know, in January, maybe you guys, we, we should do like a car club night. Because everybody's always asking, is there something I can do to help, right? Yeah. So you know what, we'll get together Mondays, I'll buy the pizza, I'll buy the beer, and whoever shows up can help me with something on the car. Yeah. And we'll figure it out. And then it got kind of popular to the point where you'd have 10, 12 guys show up on a Monday. Mm -hmm. it got so popular the last year of the build, that I would have two sets of guys show up. We would do a Monday night car club, Wednesday night car club. Yeah. And on a right? big picture thing, what that does is create one more layer this deep of a story this tall that wins you points and gives you that edge that it takes to win the Don Riddler Award. Sure. It all comes down to putting the work in. Whatever that former facet that, that uh, manifests itself in, but you've got to put the work Absolutely. in. So, all right. Okay. Enough warm and squishy <laughs> crap. All right. You let's hug let's hug. No, no, I, no. Well, no. No, I do, but <laughs> no, not now. Anyway, okay. I need a beer more than yeah, a hug. Yeah, you're right. Let's talk a little more about the car. Is that a stock windshield? I'm just gonna rattle okay, off a bunch yep. of questions. Okay, so the windshield yeah. is a stock-shaped windshield yeah. that we've cut the sides in. Right. Because the, the eight pillars are tapered inward. Yeah. And we cut three inches off the top. So yeah. get this, quick little story. Again, on the people thing. Like cut there's a quick little uh, story with this I'll guy. Try, I'll try it, so. <laughs> Yeah. Stock, the last 71 Buick Riviera rear window on the planet. NOS? NOS. Oh Some my dude gosh. on Facebook texts me. Yeah. I send a picture of the car, not yeah. a picture, but a, a drawing of the car. Yeah. He's like, hey, is that a boat tail rear window in that car? I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah. He's like, I have an NOS one. I'm like, you cannot yeah. have an NOS window for one of those. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Come to terms, gave me a really wicked deal on it. He created it up. It survived the trip from Florida to my place. Unbelievable. Again, okay, that's thing. across like, the entire North American continent. And the last one, how would you find that even if you were looking? Ever. Fluke. Total yeah. fluke. Ah, uh, no. It's it's good energy coming together yeah, is what it is. Yeah, body's but, handcrafted. Yeah. I mean, Hand-built the quarter panels, hand-built the fenders. Yeah. There's a good chunk of the door that isn't hand-built. Yeah. It's original. The door jam opening is somewhat original. And then from there, the car is, is a crafted piece of art. Yeah. But um, uh, everybody's asking about the exhaust pipe down the windshield. How about that trick? <laughs> you know, that, what a I cool know. trick. Oh, isn't that smelly in the car? Yeah. Let's talk about your induction system. Sure, Obviously. Let's, do that. let's clear it up. Uh, yeah. Your turbos yeah. are in the back. So turbos are in the rear. And the reason I did that is because I wanted the car originally in my head was going to be a mid-engine car. Yeah. The motor was going to be behind me. Yeah. And then when I did the mathematical equation, set a small block Chevy in there just for reference, the driver's seat was going to be so close to the windshield that you'd look like a complete goof. Yeah. And you would have all this space behind your head. Yeah. And I just chose, I said, no, the motor's got to be in the front. I'll set it back as much as I can. Yeah. I want that NASCAR feel. I want that super long yeah. steering column. Yeah. Like okay. you're in a NASCAR and you're, you're, I mean, you're in a driver's position, right? Uh -huh. So we stretched everything back for the driver. That left me always thinking, what could I do that would be mechanical and interesting under the rear window? Yeah. So the panel comes off, so for outdoor shows, I actually leave the turbos exposed, mm -hmm. which is super cool, right? But it dawned on me quite quickly that, whoa, wait a sec, there's a good spot to put some turbochargers. Yeah. Turbochargers take the air from the quarter panels, process it, compress it, yeah. goes into a watered air intercooler at the very back of the trunk. At the back. And now the pipe that you see is the boosted air coming back. Yeah, which so also- when you're in the car and yeah. making shifts, you can hear the blow off valve going, <laughs> Yeah, through the pipe. It's well, also your air charge gets a chance to cool even more going into the induction Absolutely system. Absolutely. So does. there's function. Absolutely. Yeah. At what? How many psi boost? Ah, uh, we we managed to hit 13 and a half with it. That's no. The it cars, becomes cars, unmanageable after that, exactly. and you may not do so well on an autocross if exactly. you're constantly steering with the back. We've got end. it turned right down actually for this weekend. Yeah. So that I can manage the car through the autocross, we've got it down to six pounds boost. Yeah. The neat thing about that is we can control that, and it okay. allows us to be able to prepare the car for certain events. Yeah. Um, will I turn it back up just yeah. for fun? 
Hell yeah, I will. Yeah. It is unbelievable yeah. to be pouring through second gear, yeah. bang third gear, and just keep hazing tires like yeah. you're driving in the snow, right? Yeah, cool. So tools and equipment. Obviously, you've got some Eastwood tools and equipment. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're no different than a lot of other shops. Uh, yeah. Jesse and Jeff Green have got a shrinker stretcher yep. that's responsible for two Riddler Awards. So Eastwood is, is kind of woven into the fabric of a lot of us guys. It does, for so sure. what, how does Eastwood work for you in your shop? It's just tools that we use, that we rely on to build certain components. The interesting thing about tools is no matter whether they're 100 years old or, or, or brand new, yeah. it's still the mind and the ability to problem solve that yes. allows you to use a tool to a degree of its potential. Because I don't think any of us ever use those shrink shrinker stretchers to their potential. Yeah. I don't think that we ever use all our tools to their potential. Right. There's a zen aspect of building cars that, um, that we tap into uh, unconsciously. I started on a new project, so, you know, the story about how I got here and, 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 and what was it like to win, well, it was, it was hard to win because it was so emotional. Yeah. It was hard, it's been hard to pay back all the people that have helped me. And I've been going through kind of a weird depression. It's like I had all this energy yeah. and this momentum. Yeah. We achieved a goal, but then once you're there, you're like, oh, man, I'm supposed to have a life, and I don't yeah. know how to have a life, because yeah. I didn't even train myself for that. Yeah. So it was a few months where I was just couldn't find myself, and it took until about a month and a half ago where yeah. I went and bought a $300 Nova and started cutting it up, yeah. where I realized, I am, this is who I am. Oh, yeah, now, there we go, now I clicked. Yeah. Just like bringing out the tools and just yeah. like working on that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say the one, on this, I tried that um, sprayable rubber coating yeah. from Eastwood yeah. to protect the paint when I was drag racing. Yes. It worked out awesome. I love that stuff. I'll tell you what I liked about it the most, though. Yeah, Elasti Wrap is what they call it. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I no, it's fine. It's the name, but here we are. Um, I liked that I was able to peel it off when it was time to peel it off yeah. really, really easily. Yeah. Yeah, if it you layer it up, you got to have six coats on there, sure. but it does. It comes off as a sheet. I did my wheels. Didn't expect it to, though. I was yeah. like, ah, oh, man, am I going to have to use some sort of solvent to melt it? And yeah. Because you, you th what you automatically think is like a, a sticker. Yeah. You peel the sticker off, and you got that glue there. Yeah. And you spend all day trying to... Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said that. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. No, and didn't. you spend all day trying to fool around with it. <laughs> That stuff just yeah. came off, and it was really easy. Like, yeah. there it was on the ground, yeah. had all the dirt and all the rubber from the tires stuck to it, and I was done. Yeah. I would suggest it to any drag race guy. Absolutely. Any drag race guy out there, yeah. that's the only way to protect your quarter panels and to keep drag from the guys. job of cleaning that stuff off. What an accomplishment. And, yeah. and, and I'm looking around, I'm seeing crowds of people. Yeah. Obviously, it's the people popular. that cannot stay yeah. away from this car, people six deep looking at this car. I know you see this. I know you hear people saying how awesome the car is and stuff like that. And I hope you're so proud of this. I'm proud of this for you. Well, before we say goodbye, I, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to, send a special message of thank you to? Yeah, you know, the, it's the people that made it happen. Yeah. And there's probably 150 guys yeah. that did little jobs to really big jobs that helped me get here. I don't need to name them specifically. They know exactly who they are. Yeah. They still come by the shop for beers and the big hugs and the yeah. high fives. And I just want everybody to know that it's a journey that was about people. Yeah. So, well done, my friend. Thanks, well Kevin. done. Hands on cars, JF Lonnie. It's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're at SEMA 2014, and uh, we're with Rick Dorr talking about the Black Pearl. This is a car that's gotten a lot of uh, interest. Can you tell me a history of how you know the concept started when you, you started building it? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, I got a phone call from James asking me if I was up for an out-of-the-box custom, and I said, yeah, and he sent me a picture, and it was a picture of a 48 Jag that was here in Las Vegas, oh, Fort cool. And uh, he bought it. We shipped it to my shop in Southern California, pulled the body off, the chassis was done. Uh, we put the body back on the chassis, started doing the body work, and as we got into it, it wasn't rust, but the car was very flimsy. And at best, after God knows how long we worked on it, we would have ended up with a European-looking custom car, a yeah. flat top <laughs> European custom right. car. While this was going on, I had uh, developed a relationship with Marcel Delay. Everyone knows who Marcel is, and Luke, his son. And uh, 
I called up James. I said, hey, I got one foot in the door with Marcel. We could do all the styling and do a Coach Bill car. And he was like, all's out. He wanted to do it. Oh, awesome. So uh, we had a line drawing from Jimmy Smith that we started with okay. that wasn't exactly what we wanted, but it was what we had told them in the beginning. Yeah. But when we sat down and blew it up to scale, it wasn't working. Okay. Regardless, uh, I was up at Marcel's every other day for a while while he made the skeleton. We got the right shape, the right lines. And then Marcel started doing his magic. Right. He shaped all of the panels by hand. It's coach built front to rear. Yep. The only thing that isn't hand built on this car are the side view mirrors. Mm -hmm. The headlights are from Headwinds. And uh, the rear view mirror, wheels and tires. Got a guess of how many pieces they had to make to make this? If I remember right, at the front fenders, I think there were nine pieces that they put together off of the skeleton. Right. They make a skeleton yep. out of square tubing and then shape the metal over it. I think just the front fenders alone, there were nine pieces to make that fender. It's incredible. Yeah, it's been I've... a great build. Uh, the body steel, yep. uh, the fenders are aluminum, mm -hmm. and uh, we debuted it at the Grand National in Pomona uh, about a year and a half ago in bare metal. Knocked everybody out. Yeah. James was real excited. I was. Marcel was excited to be able to show his, you know, craftsmanship yeah. in naked, yeah. there. Yep. And uh, we showed it a few times, and then it went to Daryl Hollenbeck for paint. Mm -hmm. uh, did many 12 or 13 paint panels. We were trying to get pearl in it. It wasn't working, so we went with the PPG black that Daryl came up with. Okay. James isn't your typical car builder. He likes things out of the box, like I said at the beginning yeah. of the... Uh, the story. Uh, he didn't want to do it in chrome. He wanted to do it brass yeah. and leave it raw brass. Yeah. And that's what we did. And it came out great. For some reason, it works on this car. Yeah. It's just scotch brighted. A flattener was put in the clear, and that was put over it. Uh, it's kind of got a patina look, but with the new paint in the background, you would think the contrast wouldn't be right, or right. it wouldn't look, but it, it worked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It looks beautiful. All right, Rick, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. And uh, good luck with the award, then. Thanks for having thanks. me. Check it out.
On the next episode of Hands on Cars, Matt puts new bedsides on Project Pile House before we take you to the SEMA show in Las Vegas to see the awesome 2,000 horsepower Maximus Charger and the Eastwood Hands On Award winner.